Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about understanding heart palpitations that are caused by anxiety. These can be so alarming. I actually had these myself, and a lot of my stress and anxiety got focused into the center of my chest. I was always like worried about my heart, and I had these skip beats, the pounding heart, all of it. And you can not only cope with this, but you can actually ease a lot of these heart palpitations that are caused by anxiety. So we want to not worry about it so much. Obviously, I always want you to take any of your physical stresses and strains that are coming out in your body and checking them out with your healthcare practitioners to make sure that you have cleared any underlying conditions that could be causing these problems. And then when you are clear of that and you are just working on your anxiety, you can actually relax a little bit knowing that, okay, this is what I'm dealing with and I can deal with this. I don't have to be adding more stress and worry to it. Some of the things we want to pay attention to is the idea that there are many causes of heart palpitations. Like I said, Many of these are within your own control, and some of these you'll want to have cleared from your healthcare professional to make sure you're not, you know, having some underlying condition that could be treated easily. Some of the reasons that we could be getting these heart palpitations are very much involved in our daily life, in the environments we live in, and our stress and strain that we carry around with us. You could also be having an electrolyte problem. You could be having your dehydration causing you some electrolyte abnormality. So that just means that you are either dehydrated from either sweating too much or being ill. There are a lot of different reasons you could be dehydrated and maybe you need to up your hydration, and maybe even use an electrolyte supplement. Tons of them out there on the market. You all probably have your own favorites, but just know that just water alone may not be getting you the electrolytes that you might be needing if you had been dehydrated, and that could cause your heart to have palpitations. And Of course, the next one on the list is stress. Any kind of stress could be throwing us into that feeling of the heart skipping a beat. It's a strain. Stress is a strain on the body. There is no doubt. And another thing with stress is that we actually begin to pay more attention to all of the things that are going on in our body. And we may have always had little skip beats or thumpy beats or whatever and now we are just beginning to notice it with our stress and our anxious paying attention to our body. Another reason people have palpitations is being out of shape. And another reason is exercise in and of itself. You can exercise and begin to get these. Again, final time I will say it is, but if you have these for those reasons, like from exercise, you do want to discuss it with your healthcare team to make sure there isn't some reason that you could be taking care of it in another way. Another one that could be causing it is alcohol. And people don't often think of this. We think of the caffeine getting our heart beating weird, right? And if it's beating faster and harder, 
from the caffeine, we might notice there's a skip beat or fluttery beats that come. But we often don't look at the alcohol as being a part of that too. So alcohol could be a reason that your heart is having palpitations. Also, you could be having crashing blood sugar. This will cause you to have heart palpitations. And many people who are having a panic attack actually don't know sometimes if they have had crashing blood sugar in the past, is this a blood sugar issue or am I having a panic attack? They feel so similar. And part of that is the heart palpitations that come along with both crashing blood sugar and anxiety. Another reason would be insomnia or sleep disruptions that could cause your heart to have palpitations, as could a fever, hormone fluctuations, whether that be menstruation or pregnancy or menopause. Many women who are going through menopause will really be noticing the heart palpitations coming on, and that is due to the hormone fluctuations. You know, hyperventilation can also cause you to have heart palpitations, and that really begins to tie it into the anxiety and the panic attacks, because when we are stressed and anxious, we begin to breathe differently. We stop taking real full breaths. We begin breathing from the upper one third of our lungs, which causes us, because it's not a deep normal breath, we take more of them. So we're breathing faster, more shallow, and this can cause us to have feelings of hyperventilation and heart palpitations. Any amount of uh, stimulants, I mentioned caffeine when I was talking about alcohol, but any stimulants, even tiny amounts of stimulants can cause or trigger heart palpitations. So do be aware of that. And that includes caffeine. Now, most people do find that our coffee drinkers or tea drinkers, they do find by switching to decaffeinated. But there are some ultra sensitive people out there that even the decaffeinated coffee or tea will have just enough of a caffeine boost in it that will cause the super sensitive to have heart palpitations. So if you are one of those ultra sensitive people, you just have to cut out all of those drinks, including the decaf. But I have found probably 95% of the people that I have dealt with are fine with decaf. So maybe all you need to do is switch your tea or your coffee or whatever you're drinking to decaffeinated, and you could eliminate that trigger of for the palpitations. Smoking will also cause heart palpitations, the nicotine. So if you are a user of nicotine or you smoke, this could be a good time to give that up because it is the heart palpitations that might be benign or innocent, and that will trigger anxiety in and of itself. You may not have been anxious before, but anything that at least it was for me centered in the the heart area would just spin me out of control. I would become extremely frightened and then anxious. And next thing I know, I'm down the wormhole. Another heart palpitation trigger is standing up too fast. Now, this doesn't happen to everyone, but for some people, that change in the blood pressure can cause their heart to palpitate. And finally, prescription, over-the-counter medications, and street drugs are all included in triggers for heart palpitations. So there's a lot of things that could just be causing your heart to beat oddly, and that can trigger anxiety in you because you are afraid of what that means. And this activates our fight or flight response, the stress does. And then we are really off to the races because 
we're afraid of our health, there's something wrong. And this stress response causes physiological, psychological, and emotional changes. And this enhances our body to deal with threat. We're supposed to be dealing with a threat. We have our fight or flight turned on. And this is our body working for us, but we are afraid because we had this feeling in our chest, our heart was palpitating. We then responded with more fear and our whole fight or flight response is going. Now we can just ride this out is what we have to do. You can just ride it out. Once it has started, you're probably not going to be able to stop it, but you can stop adding more to it by fear of the fear. So just remember, okay, I have these heart palpitations. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to let my stress and anxiety die down. And then like we talked about in another show, maybe I can have a different response. Maybe I don't have to have a fear response to this. I can actually give myself time to ride it out to see if this is going to change on its own when I calm down. And I guarantee you, just the act of calming down, you know, relaxing your breathing by having a longer, slower exhale, you're going to be able to think more clearly and not be reacting with more fear. You won't be adding fear of the fear to the whole situation. And you will be able to make a better assessment as some time goes on. No need to be afraid. When you are safe, you know my, okay, my heart's beating, I'm breathing, maybe calming down will enhance the situation. The body knows what it's doing. It's going into fight or flight because it thinks you are in danger and you need that energy and you need that ability to react quickly. So remind yourself, I am safe. Everything in my environment is cool right now. So I'm just going to ride this out and see how I feel afterwards. Some of the ways that you can actually relieve your anxiety and reduce the heart palpitations are by practicing your good breathing. And by good breathing, I mean a deep breath, which is a normal deep breath where your belly is just relaxed and you let your diaphragm flatten out and your lungs fill. This deeper breathing helps us to reduce anxiety by having a full breath through the nose and a full breath that is exhaled longer and slower. Now, I like people to breathe through their nose, both in and out, but if that is not possible for you, obviously breathe how you can through your mouth if you must. Just have it be slower. The nose actually slows the breath automatically. But if you are exercising or you are needing a good deep breath, we all open our mouth and take that kind of breath. But you can breathe as much as you can through your nose to actually have a natural slowing of the inhale and the exhale. Another thing that you can do is practice progressive muscle relaxation. This will help you to manage your heart palpitations by relaxing all your muscles. And you know that heart is a great, big, huge, strong muscle. Progressive muscle relaxation involves, if you haven't listened to it on other episodes, tensing our muscles and then relaxing them in each muscle group through our body. And with the body scan, I start with the toes and move up through the whole body to the head. I won't go through it all here. There are other episodes on that. And this technique can help you reduce the muscle tension in your body, which helps to reduce your stress and anxiety, which will reduce your heart palpitations. 
You could practice mindfulness meditation. This is really a regular practice that I hope all of you are doing or plan to be doing. And it involves focusing on the present moment without judgment. And we come to use our breath because we can only breathe in the present moment. And our breath is always with us. We don't need any extra accoutrements. We have everything we need. This can help us because it pulls us back into the present moment. We can't breathe in the future and we can't breathe in the past. Our breath, whether it's our inhale or our exhale, is happening right here, right now, in the present moment. And this practice can help reduce anxiety, promote relaxation, and again, in turn, reduce heart palpitations. Getting regular exercise is the next idea because we want to keep that beautiful heart of ours in good shape. And it's a muscle and we need to exercise it. And this can reduce anxiety also because we are expending our energy and the pent up stresses that have been brought with us throughout the day. And this helps us to improve overall health. Exercise can also help you to regulate your heart rate and reduce the heart palpitations. Again, we're keeping that heart nice and strong and we do that by exercising it. The next idea for reducing heart palpitations and relieving your anxiety about them is to get enough sleep. We talk about sleep all the time and the lack of sleep can contribute to anxiety. Actually, people are so afraid of not getting enough sleep that it's causing them to not get enough sleep. So first thing I want to say, whenever I tell you to get enough sleep, the main thing I want you to remember is even if you aren't getting enough sleep, you're okay. It's just something that we want to work toward over time to getting enough sleep or rest. Not everybody sleeps eight hours a night. Many people sleep less and have regular relaxation times throughout the day, whether that be through their meditation or their progressive relaxation time, or they're just relaxing in the bed and saying their prayers and saying their mantras or they're doing their chanting, whatever they do. It is restful time for the body. So, When I say get enough sleep, I don't want you to get afraid that you're not getting enough sleep and put more fear on yourself. You know, when you think about it, nature has made it so that we can get by. Now, we want to get as much sleep as we can, but we don't want to be afraid of not getting enough sleep. That is causing more people insomnia than I can tell you. Don't look at the clock when you wake up. Just Get up, go to the bathroom, come back in the dark, lay back down. If you don't fall right to sleep, say your prayers, do your meditation, just do your body relaxation, rest. Many of us have looked for times in our lives where couldn't people just leave me alone for 10 minutes so I could lay here on the couch and just rest? Well, here's your opportunity. It's the middle of the night. You can't fall back to sleep. So just rest. You're going to be okay. The next point that I have for you for the heart palpitations is an important one. And I want you to always remember to avoid the caffeine and any other stimulants. So check your drugs, whether they be prescription or over the counter, and see if any of them contain caffeine, because they could be causing you to have heart palpitations from that stimulant. Finally, I want to ask you to seek support. If you are just freaking out about the heart palpitations or the anxiety, the fear of having anxiety or not sleeping, talk to a friend, talk to your family, you know, talk to a coach. You can talk to me one-on-one. You can talk to me in the group. You can talk to your clergy, you know, your therapist, let them know that you're struggling with this and have them help you 
like we talked about in the other show, choose a different response. When the heart begins to act wacky, and believe me, I have had them all, thumping, the skip beats, the butterfly beats, the palpitations, I've had them all, and they come and go now too, but not like they used to, because I don't carry the stress the way that I used to. I am able to discharge it and not have it build up in me so that I am having heart palpitations or anxiety. And I know that you can do this too. It takes practice. It takes commitment to taking care of yourself, but you can do this. It's a wonderful journey. And the heart palpitations can be a marker for you so that someday you'll turn around and say, hey, I don't get those the way I used to. Isn't that something? I hope this show has been helpful for you, and I hope that if you are sharing this with your friends and family that you know how much I appreciate you sharing the show with others. It really makes a difference. And now for today's quote. Be patient and tough. Someday this pain will be useful to you. And that's from Ovid. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.